Yo, is that a Supra? That's literally a Supra. That thing's been sitting literally right next to my house. This right here is the best part. Silica Supra. <laughs> This hopefully will stay for the for the whole like eighth mile journey up to the crack house. That's literally sitting in the backyard here because I don't have any room for it anywhere else. I'm surprised the local kids haven't thrown their beer bottles back here yet, but I don't particularly blame them yet. There we go. Ah oh, yes, the crack house. I'm sure you can see why we call it that. Let's turn on all three lights we have in the barn right now. Ah, look at that. That's beautiful. Alrighty folks, we are in the crack house now, and as you can tell, we kind of have a limited number of hand tools, and that's just because I don't want to bring all my stuff up here. So what I'm doing today is I got to clear out the engine bay of all the wiring harnesses and all the things we're not going to need for our new motor, because it's probably going to be carbureted, or I'm going to go to a Holley Sniper EFI, or a Holley Dominator EFI, one of the two, and they're going to clear all the other stuff that we don't need pretty much. So just, this might stay, that needs to go, unless I want to have AC, I'm not sure if I'm going to have AC or not. I need to get the manifolds out of here because these are for the V6. And also, I'm not going to be keeping this exhaust. The biggest thing we have to do is get our ignition wires. We have to strip the whole wiring harness to find only the wires we need for the, the starter. The rest of the stuff we really don't need. I can't remember if I explained this before or not, but I'm going to do it again. So the reason we're tearing the wiring out is because we're, gonna, we're not going to need half this stuff. I don't need electric gauges. I'm going, to, I'm going to be putting in mechanical gauges. I trust them more. And when we're drag racing, you need to have reliable gauges. So the only wires we need are the, starting, the starter wires. And so we're just gonna have to take this all out, strip the wiring harness, which we might not even have to do, but we're not gonna need hardly anything at all. Also, we're gonna strip the interior a little bit. I'm not gonna go too far on it today, but we need to strip it out because that's just unneeded weight. Like for right now, we're not gonna be doing too crazy of a strip down and build, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing. All right, so this truck is probably gonna be running 12, so we don't technically need a roll bar or anything like that but i want to be safe about it and because i expect this truck to be going fast in the near future we might as well go ahead and get the truck ready so don't mind my mess back here what we're going to do is we're going to put a hoop that ties into the frame from here it comes up and around and goes down with a crossbar and then we're going to have a uh, dash bar that runs across here and also we're going to have door bars that runs down and then a bar that comes around Nothing too freaking crazy, but enough to keep us safe and so that when we do start going faster, we're already set and ready to go kind of thing. So we need to strip a lot of this crap out. We need to strip out like the the heater fan and all that good stuff and get it ready for, for racing. Okay, ABS lines are unhooked. And then there's a big mass of wires right here that I just cut. Cause I'm pretty sure I don't need those, but I guess we'll find out in due time, but I don't think I will. Oh God. This is the only part of the wiring harness that we actually need, which is just the starting starter wires. It's the only part that we actually need. Other than that, we don't need anything at all. So I never told you this, but we call this the new garage, the crack house, because it looks like a crack house because it's so messed up and bad. But if you noticed, there's like pieces of birdhouse all over my carburetor, my rebuild kit and all that good stuff because it all comes in through there. And a while back when I was in here rebuilding the carburetor, it was snowing and I'm feeling snow hit me. And I look up and it's literally just coming right through the roof. Crack house is an amazing place. The wiring harness is now gone. It's all out of there. Look how much of a mess that was just for that V6. It looks a lot cleaner now though. But the next thing I need to do is get the AC crap all out of here and then get the exhaust out of here because we don't be needing this exhaust anymore. What we're gonna do for the exhaust is actually, we're gonna run it back to point right at the tires. Now I've seen this a few times before. A lot of drag or a lot of burnout cars or drag cars or like cars in Australia do that to blow the smoke and whatnot to make it look cooler. But I think we might do that because it puts a lot more heat into the tires. So when we're drag racing, we get that much more heat into the tires and it keeps them warmer a little bit longer so we can see how that works. I'm not sure. I'm not saying that's exact science because I'm not a drag racer and I don't know anything about drag racing yet. I hope I will, I hope I'll learn. But I mean, it makes sense in my head. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that actually works out. So I just took the valve cover off this motor and I don't know if this oily sludge was here from me 
or from the owner before me, but it is disgusting. Like, look how thick and nasty that stuff is. And it is all built up. It's all, like, like sludgy and disgusting looking. I'm very curious to see what this looks like when I take the head off this thing. I got to take the intake off, and after I take that off, I'll get the head off of here, and we can get a look at how bad this motor is. Because it ran... Not bad, but I mean, it was well worn out. I had 230 some thousand miles on it when I got done. I'm curious to see how like the bad the piston slop is and how bad the rings are and whatnot and see if there's any valve problems or whatever. I'm curious to see, because I ran this thing hard, so it'll be really interesting to see how bad this motor is. Okay, so I'm almost ready to get the head off here. I got the manifold bolts off on this side. I'm pretty sure I can pull it off here without taking the other side off. But these bolts are literally grotty. Like, they stick. Look at that. That is disgusting. You can't even tell there's a bolt right there. But trust me, there's a bolt right there. But you can't even tell hardly. And it's like that for every single one of these bolts. Like, there's one right there. There's one right there. You can kind of see it. That one you can see pretty well. So, we're getting there. Like, three more bolts. And it's out of there, hopefully. Oh, also, another thing I wanted to show you, these MV3500s, when I said they're aluminum casing pieces of junk, this is what I had to do to keep the shifting, the shifter housing on here. Look at the slop in that thing. Look at the slop in that. The original transmission had the same problem, that's why we had to put this one in it. They're aluminum, so these bolts strip out all the time, which causes them to lift, which causes transmission fluid to go all over this thing pretty bad. Well, I put this one in here, it did the same thing. In fact, it cracked on one side, so there's different bolts on all sides. And then this was me and my dad's fix. And I'll be honest, it actually worked pretty well. This is a million times better of a shift than what it was originally. It's really freaking bad. So when I went to go pick this transmission up from the junkyard, I asked the guy what the truck came out of, and he said, well, it came out of a, it came out of a truck that the guy died in. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, the guy was drunk one night, drove underneath the trailer, and decapitated himself. Think of a car that's never had an oil change for 20 years, okay? Let that sink in. All right, times that by 12, and that's what you get here. That's holy crap, dude. Have you ever seen just go, like, just gouged up oil like that before ever? I think that is terrible. All right. Whoo, doggy. Well, there she is. I'm actually surprised. They're not as bad as I expected, to be honest with you. <laughs> kind of upset about that, but oh my good lord, look at that oil build up though. Oh, that's a lot of sludge. That is a lot of oil just built up. That's disgusting. But surprisingly, the pistons don't look that bad. They probably don't have a whole lot of crap on them, being that I ran the living crap out of this thing. Yeah, it's actually pretty clean, surprisingly so. That actually upsets me a little bit because I was expecting much worse. But let's see what the let's see what the backside of the head looks like. There's not much carbon buildup. Like I said again, I ran the crap out of this thing, so there shouldn't be any carbon buildup on this dude. Huh? Genuinely surprised. I just want to say real quick that we appreciate your viewership so much, and it means so much to us when you guys view our episodes, like it, subscribe, and comment. And if you could do that for us, that'd mean so much if you can comment, like, subscribe. And we'd really appreciate if you were to share our videos. It'd mean a lot to us because we're not as we're not growing as fast as we'd like. And we get it, it takes time to grow. But so many people have told us that we should be blowing up by this point and they don't know why. We don't know why either. But again, we do appreciate everything you guys do for us. It means so much. But we'd really appreciate it if you could, you know, subscribe, like, comment, share, whatnot. Also, you can follow us on Instagram at American underscore Detour. You can follow me at 4.8 underscore Balgan underscore Maggart. Uh, you can follow all the other guys. It'll be up here on the screen. It'll be in the uh, it'll be in the description. We appreciate it again. Can't thank you enough. But guys, that is it for this episode. So, 12 second truck coming soon. Uh, in the next few videos, you're gonna be seeing us finish up building uh, the 5.7. Also, putting in the roll cage, the like 10 second spec roll cage in this truck, and then. You know, hopefully here soon, within the next week or so, putting the motor in it and get it running and see how it goes.